First, live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello, everyone. This is Fox 12 Now. I'm Greg Nibbler. We appreciate you joining us. We are live streaming here out of the Fox 12 Oregon newsroom, as we do every weekday starting around 1 p.m., which allows us to have longer form segments and uh, interviews. Uh, recently, Amazon announced their plans to build four nuclear energy facilities, specifically SMRs, which are small modular reactors outside of Richland, Washington. Now, these would be, in theory, to power some of their data farms up there. We've spoken to Columbia Riverkeeper about their concerns with these facilities. We've spoken to Energy Northwest, which is one of the partners that Amazon is working with. Energy Northwest is a conglomerate of many different public uh, energy partners in the state of Washington. We spoke to them, so you can you can watch that interview at our Fox 12 Oregon YouTube channel. We also spoke to a nuclear engineer from Oregon State University. So we're trying to cover this from all angles, but Amazon is the one we hadn't spoken to yet until just recently. So I spoke to Shannon Kellogg, who's the VP of Public uh, Policy at AWS. Wanted to make sure I got that right. AWS, which is Amazon Web Services and part of those data uh, farms and data centers where really a lot happens. I'll think of all your cloud computing, AI, all of that goes through data centers like this one, which require a lot of energy. So we spoke to Shannon about this, about uh, what their plans are for these facilities, how that's going to affect the region, some of the concerns that some of the other people have about these, and what the plans are going forward for building these, and specifically about SMRs, why these kinds of nuclear energy facilities. So a lot is covered in this. Uh, we hopefully, hopefully got to a lot of questions that people may have, uh, but let's go ahead and go to it right now. Here it is, Shannon Kellogg talking about Amazon's plans. Shannon, number one, thank you very much for having some time to talk to us today. I really appreciate this. And, you know, when this announcement came out, obviously a lot of people are very interested in what's going on with it. And I think the first thing, you know, that really is coming to mind, I think, for, for a lot of people that want to ask is why go nuclear? Why, what is it about the nuclear energy facilities and going that route in particular for your power supplies that made Amazon want to do that? Well, Greg, thanks for having me on and uh, really appreciate uh, the, um, the opportunity to speak to you and, and your audience today. Uh, well, you know, um, we have been, uh, as you may know, uh, for many years moving uh, toward our carbon free goals that we have set across the company for 2040. And a big part of that over the last decade has been to execute on our renewable energy strategy. Uh, we set several years ago a goal of uh, being 100% renewable uh, powered um, worldwide by 2030 initially, and then we pushed that goal up to 2025. And we actually achieved that goal, as we announced earlier this year, by the end of 2023. So today we operate uh, at 100% renewable energy powered across the goal. So now we're pivoting uh, to get to that uh, longer term 2040 goal of carbon free. And we believe uh, that uh, a important part of getting there will be to leverage uh, nuclear power. And when you're looking at it, you know, as for those for those goals of of being carbon free, and we're talking about different sources of renewable energy. What is it particularly about nuclear that you're going for versus just expanding solar and wind energy, which is, you know, possible there, especially in, in this region? Yeah, and we, by the way, are the world's largest buyer of uh, renewable energy, largest corporate buyer four years in a row, and we will continue to buy renewable energy. Uh, but in order to achieve those carbon-free goals, uh, you know, we can't get there just through renewable energy alone. Um, nuclear is 24-7. Is, uh, when you look at wind and solar, you're, you're not going to get there, you know, 24-7 just by using those types of sources of renewable energy. And so we believe it's really important uh, to look at alternative uh, sources, and we think that nuclear, both current generation and then uh, next generation uh, nuclear is going to be a really big part of that picture. And talking about those generations of the nuclear energy facilities, the SMRs, the small modular reactors, which is part of the plan um, that was announced there, partnering with X Energy to bring those in. What is it in particular about those kind of nuclear energy facilities that brought you to that conclusion to, to go with these first four? Yeah, so as we look ahead and you think about where the, you know, the U.S., for example, will need to be 
uh, with its uh, energy generation, uh, let alone transmission. But if you just look at energy generation, uh, you know, we're going to have to have other sources uh, that come on the grid over the next uh, 10 to 15 years. And so we believe that small modular reactors or SMRs will be an important part of new generation coming to the grid in the next 10 to 15 years and beyond. And so as we um, made these announcements uh, here a couple of weeks ago, we were looking at um, where could we uh, uh, develop sites with partners uh, to uh, bring, start to bring SMRs online in the next decade. And it's gonna take several years to get there, but you have to start now. And so we found a great partner in Energy Northwest uh, uh, to identify uh, a, a site uh, in uh, Washington State, which uh, you all are familiar with. And um, we then uh, also are partnering up with X Energy, an SMR developer, which we think has some really cutting edge technology and is well positioned to help us and uh, Energy Northwest develop these initial four SMRs, uh, which are part of this uh, initial commitment. And we're looking at those four SMRs for a total of 300 megawatts coming online in the next decade. And when we talk about those communities up there, so in Washington and where these facilities are going to be in the partnership with Energy Northwest, um, you know, when you look at the, com the surrounding community of where these are going to be built, will any of that energy be of benefit or of use for them? Or can you maybe walk through what some of the benefits would be for the people in that area? Well, the, the plan uh, by Energy Northwest is to um, have that energy available on the grid. And so, you know, we, of course, are the backer uh, of the project. And Amazon is, you know, providing the funds, this initial round of funds to support the um, uh, 300 or so megawatts will be coming online first. And then that will be going right into the grid. That's the idea. And so, uh, you know, certainly um, uh, it would be for broader use, but we'll be putting this right on the grid. Okay. And for the data facilities, you know, that this, a lot of this is, will be powering. Naturally, we all know that these do take a lot of power. Um, and, you know, when you're looking at, at this from an overall perspective, are there certain ways that you're looking at energy efficiency and maybe reducing the, the need of as much energy for your facilities there. Yeah, so uh, if, if you look at uh, data center um, uh, energy use and you think about commercial cloud computing, so Amazon Web Services or AWS, of course, is a commercial cloud computing provider. And so we're owners and operators of data centers, and we've been in this business for a long time. We've been very focused for many years on improving the efficiency of our data centers and the power use that goes into those data centers. So if you look at um, how our data centers are using energy and power today, our commercial cloud data centers are at least four times more efficient than what are traditional on-premise data centers. So if you're you know, an organization that's building and operating your own data center, we're likely going to be at least four times more efficient in how we run and operate our commercial data centers. And so there's been a lot of focus on that for, for many, many years. And then as you look ahead, you know, I think that we all agree, and, and, and you know, this is probably a known fact by this point, that as um, uh, the demands around data and, uh, you know, you look at, technologies like generate, generative AI yeah. really start to take off. Uh, we, we, I think, all acknowledge that the energy use will go up. Now, that's not the only reason, of course. You know, you look at the electrification of the grid and, and uh, the use of electrical vehicles and all of the other power needs that are emerging. It's going to need more energy. Uh, and, and so um, data centers are a part of it, but they're not the only part. Of it. But I do want to make sure that people realize that we in the industry are spending a lot of time, you know, right now and focus making those data centers that we're running today and that we'll run tomorrow uh, all the more efficient, 
Um, when, uh, you know, talking about that, looking further ahead, and as we see things change, you're looking to meet, meet your goals on your energy goals there and, and being carbon free. When we're talking about the building of these SMRs, how long will that take, do you anticipate, once you start production on those? So, of course, our partner will be X Energy, and they will be teaming uh, with the utility, in this case, uh, Energy Northwest. Uh, the consortium of utilities, and 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 so um, you know we're the we're the the backer, we're the off taker, we're the you know financial uh, supporter, you know of this of this project, and um, you know we're not going to be able to manage the timelines completely ourselves. So you know all of the organizations that I just mentioned are going to be a part of this process, and then of course you have the permitting that that will have to take place. So. We're looking at um, bringing these online by the early 2030s. And so, you know, I said earlier in the next decade, um, you know, if you look at early 2030s, we're, we're now about to go into 2025. So it gives you that kind of general timeline that we're hoping to, to achieve here, which is in that um, next decade, but, you know, eight to 10 year period. Okay. Um, and just one more question about that as well, you know, when it comes to nuclear energy, when people hear that word uh, nuclear, you know, naturally there's some apprehension that ju that's just out there in the public. There's also something here in the Northwest with Hanford, so there's probably some residual uh, just concerns when people hear that hear that word. Uh, so for you, um, how would you address any public concerns that people have associated with these nuclear energy facilities and also with the, the storage of waste further down the road once that does become you know, something that, that's gonna have to be taken care of. Sure, well, we really believe in the promise around uh, small modular reactors. And so when you look at how the technology is evolving, these are gonna be smaller facilities, they're going to be more efficient, and they're going to be producing a lot less waste. Uh, and so all of those benefits are gonna be important in terms of addressing the concerns uh, that some of the concerns that you reference, And then, of course, it's going to be important for all of us who are involved in these projects to go out and listen uh, in the communities that, that could be impacted or believe that they'll be impacted in some way. And so in this case, in, in the Northwest, we're partnering with Energy Northwest, X Energy, and then ourselves. And so we should all be out there, obviously, listening to what people have to say and making sure that there's open communication. But we believe uh, that SMRs are going to be uh, really um, a, a breakthrough uh, in the uh, in in the nuclear space, and it's important, by the way, not only for uh, us in our industry. It's important for the country. When you think about um, uh, again the energy picture in the next uh, 15 or so years, uh, the ability of the United States to have more generation and more sources of generation, clean energy, is going to be so critical, not only to our economy, but to our national security. Because when you think about keeping the U.S. leadership in place in technology areas like generative AI, energy is gonna become a fundamental part of that. And so it's really important for all of us to you know, consider what's at stake as well, uh, not just for us as a company or industry, uh, but also for um, you know our country and uh, our national economy and national security. Well, Shannon, thank you for having time to talk to me about this. I, I really appreciate you joining us here. Is there anything else that you think is important just for the general public to know uh, about the plans and what's been put out there? Well, I you know I um, would just encourage people to uh, if they have questions you know come to some of the players involved in this space and we're all happy to talk about it. Uh, we had a great event here a couple of weeks ago with uh, several different uh, policymakers involved, including the Secretary of Energy and and many voices uh, from um, the utility industry and and the private sector. And so I think it's really important to get any questions out there, um, you know, to, to, to get them to folks uh, in our sector and the energy sector, and uh, let's have a dialogue and a discussion. And then also, um, uh, again, there's some really exciting things happening in this industry. And we uh, uh, had a couple of videos that we played at this event two, year, two weeks ago or so. And uh, there's some really interesting demonstrations uh, of the, um, the technology that's emerging here 
and how SMRs could work. And I encourage people to understand, uh, to uh, try to understand how these um, small modular reactors are actually going to work and some of the um, uh, benefits, including uh, the uh, really significant uh, uh, reduced waste uh, that will be produced, uh, you know, in, by these facilities. So I encourage people to, to self-educate and then come to all of us uh, with any questions that they have. All right. Well, Shannon, thank you very much for, for joining us and answering some of some of our questions that we have here. I appreciate the time and uh, looking forward to finding out more. All right. Thank you, Greg. All right. Uh, again, thank you to them, for to Amazon and for Shannon for being available for that interview. And we have several interviews on this subject up on our Fox 12 Oregon YouTube channel. Just go to the Fox 12 Now tab. Uh, we, again, we spoke to Columbia Riverkeeper about their concerns about these facilities being near the Columbia River. We spoke to an OSU nuclear scientist about how this all works. And we spoke to Energy Northwest, one of those partners that... Uh, Shannon mentioned there with Amazon that is a public partner and for uh, managing a number of different uh, public energy facilities across the state. So um, lots to cover on that. And uh, as always, we appreciate you joining us. So don't forget to look there. You can also go to kptv.com or to the Fox 12 Now tab, or you can follow along at the Fox 12 Oregon app. If you have comments or questions that weren't answered in that, feel free to send in an email. Fox 12 now at kptv.com, fox12 now at kptv.com. And I can see if we can get those answered for you. If you think that there's another interview you would like to hear associated with this topic or any other, feel free to send that in. I can't guarantee we can always accommodate that, but sometimes we can. So it does not hurt to ask, and we do encourage you to do so. But that's it for right now. Thanks for joining us. I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 Now.